Hey, Brenda! Brenda, Brenda! Hi, Carrie! So good to see you again, my friend. Oh my goodness, it's so great to see you. My work wife, from <laughs> way back right. when, because we are the, the what? The dynamic duo. That's right, that's right. <laughs> How are you? What are you doing? Tell me what you're doing now. I transitioned from third grade, gen ed, to now being the ELL coordinator at my school. And so it's been a process to get here and to be in a position where I can mentor, coach, and support teachers, students, and families. But I really feel that it was all, everything that I've done thus far has really helped me to be where I'm at. Let's see, I taught 12 years in the classroom, um, primarily third grade. I did fifth for one year. And then that's when you proposed to me and we <laughs> became right. one. We really did. We worked so well yeah. together. We departmentalized and we did that for about, I want to say three years, maybe it was four. I think, yeah, right? I, can't remember. I think it was around that. Three and then four I, years. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I had a great um, job opportunity and I took a leap of faith and now yes. I am um, doing professional development with learning A to Z. So Brenda, let's talk about the Spanish English dictionaries. What was, what's the, what's the proper term for those? So they were, they're called word to word dictionaries, word That's to word right. dictionaries. And it's because they, it's just because they come in different languages, but we, I, I, if I recall correctly, I think we only were dealing with students that were Spanish speakers. Yeah. And so I think that right. we, we were just like, go get your diction, go get your Spanish yeah. dictionary. But, no. but they're word to word dictionaries. And the reason for that is that, um, on our state exams, they're not allowed to use regular dictionaries. They can only use a dictionary that translates from their native language to English or English to their native language. But yes, but it was, it was one of those tools. I mean, and again, I remember, well, see, at this point, I think I would tell you something because you would like to use Google Translate all the time. And I'd be like, Carrie, you gotta stop because when April comes around, they can't use that. And so I would kind of, I would, you know, initially, um, and again, I, I wanna make sure that we remember that we had the majority, the, the ELL population that we're talking about were really those that just came from another country because uh, the other ones that, the other ELLs that we had, and if like we, we, we do, we're part of the, one of the states that does WIDA, um, we had students at different levels. And right. so, but, but those students really, they, they were already reading, they were already um, writing, you know, they were right. more advanced, they were past developing. And so those students were we, and where I see that there's more of a need in support knowledge right. is for those kids, like I said, that are like at zero. And right. so in our, in, in our county and in Miami, um, that's huge, but I know that across the state, uh, as we go further North, it's not, it's not such a, yeah. a big population. And so for us, again, we, th that was where our first year we were like, again, coming from the gifted classroom or by that time they get to, they got to you in third or fifth grade, it wasn't really as, as you know, uh, popular. I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't such a big thing, but for us, it was, it, it was those years that we worked. It was like, and then we became so good that it felt like we always got them. <laughs> Which is okay because we were able to perfect our system. And we were like, okay, we, you know, but anyway, going back to those, the dictionaries, it was a word to word dictionary. And the way that we used them was, um, uh, initially, um, was that they, they didn't know what to write. And I think as, educators like we forget that we're teaching to digital natives like they know right so much more now. than us especially now and technology yeah. is such a great outlet and in the last for them. year and a half oh my goodness it's just yeah. exploded so I, so that like that google translate in a way kind of helped right. us right um bridge that connection right especially and again this is all and i think dictionary. we need to make sure we understand we our, our audience knows that this is all about those initial stages that that initial right. stage where you know um th there's zero language zero yeah, english zero. language you know because once they get to you know the developing the expanding 
that it's right. a whole different it's it's different you can use more scaffolds you can use you know a different kind of um give them extra time but these right. kids it doesn't matter how much time Nothing. you gave them yeah. it didn't matter but how... i think that one thing they had in common was that technology especially for our pop our population of students yeah. they had exposure to that technology yeah. and yeah. they were so yeah with right. it when it came and even, to finding right, ways to communicate right and no and right. now and now like you know now with having that feature and believe it or not i don't think even a lot of teachers don't even probably don't know that because again if you're in a population in an area where there isn't a large ELL population you don't know these things and it's because of you know what our kids came with or it's because we you know how they say um you know you 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 realize what's available when you're in need of it or there's an invention once you're in the need of it um and i can't remember the the saying right now but um anyway so what happened was we were forced to say okay what are we going to do because you kept saying okay you can talk to them in spanish but i can't you know yeah um, right and even I, though that, you had just gotten back to the dominican us... republic right <laughs> <laughs> i know but that led us then to teaching them how to use the dictionary right right because correct. they're like um yeah and I not can become google dependent. translate all day right but right they didn't and know not how to properly dependent. use the dictionary right and so just last year we got some russian students and we have one russian teacher at school but at the end of the day, that teacher's not with that student. So what I had to teach the, the teacher was, okay, grab your Google Translate on your phone, grab an iPad, grab a computer, put the phrase, and they'll say it. And even when I use it in a few key moments, their eyes, the fact that they're hearing their language, when we're talking about a language like that, I can't speak Chinese or, or Russian or, you know, even Portuguese, I can't speak it. Um, their eyes just light up and it's just like, you know, I, I, I guess it probably makes them feel like, oh, wait, <laughs> you know, reminds me of home or something, you know, and, and, and the key with us was, okay, yeah, the technology is great, but at some point we need to start decreasing, decrease it. And that's where that transition would come in. And we would be like, okay, we're now six weeks into the semester or we're six weeks into the first nine weeks, uh, the first quarter. All right. You sh and again, it's, that that oral language is what was key. So yes. we would ha we'd have a word bank on the board just to kind of make that connection. Right. And we I said we're learning together. Right. We're learning together. Right. Use your and we made sure that we had yeah a we, very, we definitely had words everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. everywhere you yeah. know everything was labeled we had our little word bank on the board our word of the right. day i mean yeah. and you, you know because and you had the math and science or you talked about the science you had your math vocabulary you had your science vocabulary right. i had my vocabulary you know that just we we learned from um you know our daily our, our weekly readings or anything you know or words that they would kind of say often in spanish and they were like okay this is what it means in english and so we had common day-to-day -day words that they needed to just know in their in their um day-to-day -day life out of school and then we had the academic vocabulary which was important and i i was big on that i was big on okay we learned this word you should be using that in your writing it which leads us back to the writing because i do want to talk about the writing because we've talked about the reading how it was important to have the digital component the audio components repetition but the writing the writing is so hard because it's like, where do you start with these kids? And so what we weren't afraid of and what t educators should be, shouldn't be afraid of, and that's where, especially the kids that are coming in, because it's one thing to deal with kids who don't know the language in kindergarten, but what do you do when they come in in third, fourth, fifth grade, when they're now have, going to have to take the state exam? And in fourth grade, where they have to have a writing exam. What, where do we start? How do we get them moving? And the teachers are, educators are afraid of like, you know, uh, they're not writing a paragraph. And we and, and we had to say, wait, we can't get them to a paragraph without having words, you know, words build phrases and phrases build sentences and sentences mm -hmm. build, you know, mm -hmm. paragraphs. You have to summarize, retell what's happening in the beginning, what's happening in the middle, what's happening in the end. And the way that I mean, the best way that I was able to do that was being able to tell the students, okay, in your native language, write me, I think I would start them with two sentences, write me two sentences about what happened at the beginning. And this way I knew, could they tell me who the characters are? Could they identify the problem? 
So they would write it in their native language. And then right underneath, I would tell them, skip a line or two. Write your next sentence or sentences about what's happening in the beginning. So once they had the beginning, I would say, okay, now you would, you're going to underline or highlight the key words in that sentence. So Brenda, before you move on, because I feel like what I have to say is going to build on that being the co, you know, being the co-teacher, um, and how, what, so this is how I supported that. And I really feel like it really played a role. Um, and, and for me, since I didn't have that link, you know, I, I didn't speak their native language. I use, and I know you use this too in the classroom, but I think this strategy supported that. I've used a lot of the framing devices or graphic organizers, you know, so for science, right. So we would use sentence frames, especially for science, because we would be um, investigating, you know, as a scientist, you know, what, what do they, what's their hypotheses? So we would have this frame, the sentence frame for them and alternatively what they do in my class is they would use their dictionaries look up the words or highlight the words they didn't know write the translation on top and then they would fill in the blanks so this over time because they were so used to using these framing device you know not only that even without the framing device you know if i would write something on the board they knew exactly what to do because we were consistent we were doing the same strategy in both classes slightly different you know from a different perspective but they knew exactly what to do and that built so much confidence going back to what i was saying was mm -hmm. once they learned some of that once their vocabulary you that know started to increase right? mm -hmm. once they, once they started, their vocabulary started to increase, mm -hmm. what happened was they would even come up to me and say, can I write a mixture of English and Spanish? And again, because I had that ability to be able to read in Spanish, I would be like, yes. And so I started getting Spanglish sentences <laughs> where they were mixing. They would say, el dad. And I'd be coming to you. I'd be like, wait, what no did you pudo, say? No eh, food, eat, yeah. <laughs> la comida. <laughs> you know, and so, yeah. you know, so it was harder for me because yes. my brain was like yeah. going all over the place. Yeah. But if it's, if it's, it made them feel good that now, yes. oh wait, look, I'm not just writing in Spanish, I'm writing mixture. And by before I'm telling you, I, 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 I don't think I'm wrong when I say this, but I think that by December or January, they were writing all their sentences in English and yeah. we moved from moving just two sentences in each, the beginning, middle and end, they were writing like, you know, multiple sentences. It was and we outstanding. Were paragraphs, and it was you know? all because we were, we were, we were consistent. We were cohesive. We made sure everything we we're doing was the same. And I think the key also is that we, what something that was really important was we didn't like downgrade, you know, we still taught to the standards, but we just kind of lowered the expectation was just different. Mm -hmm. The tools we used were different, but mm -hmm. they were still exposed to the same content. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's, that, that's key. And, and, and. I think once they knew, like, for example, like I remember us using like vocabulary maps, um, you know, they knew that they, they would have to, okay, what is this word I want to learn? Let me translate it into my native language using my word to word dictionary. And then the next step was either drawing a picture in the early stages or eventually writing a sentence using that word and identifying synonyms and antonyms. And so that once they did it over and over again, then you were able to apply that to, okay, these are key words that I want you to learn in science class. I need you to complete this vocabulary map for this. And so it was able, and they had these personal dictionaries that we used to have, give them where they would add which words meant were meaningful to them. And, and so it was definitely being able to make sure that they, they didn't learn in isolation and that they were connecting across the curriculum right. and across all the different uh, content areas. So Carrie, it's been amazing catching up with you, going down memory lane, um, seeing how our experiences um, have are, have led to what we're doing now, how you're helping teachers, and you know how I am able to bring my experiences, not only as an educator having worked with ELLs and kind of like specializing in that for like the years that we were together. 
but also bringing in, you know, my role as a mother, because now my kids are in school. And so I'm like, okay, this works, this doesn't work. I, and I try to pass that on to, you know, the parents and the teachers. And so it was so great to just kind of reminisce and, 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 and see how, you know, everything that we did. It truly was a pleasure, Brenda, to see you. And um, until we meet again. Yes, my friend. And I'll, yes, I miss you. Time. So hopefully we'll yep. see each other again. We'll connect when I come back down to South Florida. Absolutely. Absolutely.